Hello and welcome to OEN Engage. Thank you for joining us for today's session, OEN 101. My name is Barb and I'm the Director of Community Engagement here at the Open Education Network. We are delighted to have you all here today and thank you for the work that each of you in our community do to make education more equitable, accessible, and affordable through open education. The Open Education Network is based at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, which is built within the traditional homelands of the Dakota people. It is important to acknowledge the peoples on whose land we live, learn, and work as we seek to improve and strengthen our relations with our tribal nations. We also acknowledge that words are not enough. We must ensure that our institution provides support, resources, and programs that increase access to all aspects of higher education for our American Indian students, staff, faculty, and community members. As we begin the session, just a couple of things. Um, we have time allotted at the end for questions, and we are committed to providing a friendly, safe, and welcoming environment for all attendees. You can learn more about our community norms at z.umn.edu slash OEN community norms. Please join us in creating a safe and constructive space. As for this session, the goal of OEN 101 is to orient you to our community and familiarize you with some of the foundational tools that are available to you as members. We will begin with an overview of who we are as a community and how you can connect directly with your fellow members before moving on to delegates and their role in sharing out OEN resources locally. Then we'll go over tools that delegates have access to, including the Google Group Community Hub and Data Dashboard. And to wrap the session, we'll review the OEN Engage schedule to give you an idea of how you can best plug in this week based on your interests and in open education goals before we transition to that time for questions. So who are we as a community? You probably see some familiar faces on here, and you may have seen uh, Dave's staff introduction in our very first session, but in case you didn't, here is the OEN team. Our staff is cheering you and your open education initiatives on from the sidelines at all times, and we're here for you if you need us. I'll point out some faces that you might be seeing this week or whose names you might see in your inbox on occasion. We just heard the annual member update from Dave prior to this session. Tanya and Jamie collaborate closely on our certificate programs, as well as the Open Pedagogy Workshop and Open Educational Practices Initiatives. As our strategic, uh, sorry, digital content strategist, Tonya highlights the work of our members on the blog and social media, and so she's always open to blog post ideas and may reach out to you in that capacity. Karen is our go-to person for all things publishing, and her, Chai Yang, and Jamie also collaborate on the Open Textbook Library, or the OTL, as we call it. Andy is the one behind the scenes working on the OTL, as well as the data dashboard, and Lorraine is in charge of membership contracting and collaborates with Barry very closely on invoicing. So for the logistics of your membership, Lorraine is your go-to person. In terms of my role, I like to think of myself as a big set of OEN ears, as I'm here to listen to your needs and ideas and help translate those um, back to our team so that we can respond with programs and opportunities to address them. So as such, please always feel free to email me with any questions, feedback, or ideas as I truly welcome your input. And most importantly, our community is made up of you all. As you can see here on the map, we have about 300 member institutions, consortia, and state systems representing nearly 1,700 campuses across the US, the UK, Australia, and Canada. And if you'd like to dive a little deeper into who your fellow members are or who may be located near you, you can check that out on the interactive map and member list on our website. With such a broad community of open education practitioners, that means that no matter what type of institution you're at or stage in your open education programming or challenges you might be facing, there are others who share those identities and challenges in our community or maybe have experience moving through them. So you're not alone, know that, and you've got a great network to tap into as a source of shared knowledge and support in your work. 
Every two years, we conduct a community scan to check in with members about the ways in which we can best serve you as an organization. And as a part of this past year's scan, we asked members to describe our community. And so the word cloud that you see here was created with those responses. And as you can see in their own words, our members described our community as supportive, that was the biggest one, open, welcoming, helpful, collaborative. They also use words like active, resourceful, energetic, and committed. And um, in my opinion, I think that this is truly representative of the culture of our community in my experience as well and, and of what all of our members bring to one another. As such, we hope that you feel welcome and supported as part of the OEN, but also know that you are a key part of our community as well. And we really hope that each member feels empowered to share the strengths and experience that you bring to the table as well. So to reiterate, the biggest takeaway of today's session is that community lies at the core of what we do here at the OEN and the support and energy that you all provide one another is one of the most important aspects and attributes of our community. So um, as such, we're gonna begin today's session with an opportunity for you to connect with some fellow members and have a little fun this morning before we transition into discussing more formal programs through which you can connect with members. So for the next 10 minutes, we'll divide into small breakout rooms where you'll have the opportunity to meet uh, two or three colleagues as you participate in an activity called the ABCs of me. And this activity harkens back to one you or perhaps your kids may have done in elementary school where you use the letters in your name to get creative in describing yourself. Welcome back everybody. We hope you had a little fun with that activity and that you met someone new or perhaps learned something about some of your fellow OEN colleagues. That was a little taste of getting to know others in our community. And next up, we'll cover more formal opportunities that you have to do so as part of the OEN. Really facilitating connections between you all in the spirit of sharing support and collaboration, some of those words that we saw in the word cloud, is really the most important thing that we can do as an organization. And we offer three channels whose primary purpose is connecting members to one another who have similar interests and goals. And you can see those here. The first is the Colleague Connector Program. We also have the NICE Forum, a self-named group that stands for Nourishing Interconsortial Collaborative Excellence. And we also have the Publishing Co-op. If you have ever wished you had a personal sounding board or a colleague with whom you could brainstorm all things open education, the Colleague Connector program might be a great fit for you. How it works is that you just complete a simple application to participate, and then we use that information to pair you with another open education practitioner from our community with whom you are encouraged to meet monthly for meaningful conversation, idea sharing, and problem solving as it relates to open education. In terms of commitment, the partnership runs through the course of the academic year. So it starts in September through May, and um, we send out um, monthly uh, conversation prompts if you need some ideas of how to speak to that. And what we've heard from participants is that it's really helpful to, to learn from someone, to share with someone who can relate to what you're doing and maybe commiserate with what you're going through in your work, but also who brings a different perspective, who is removed from the, the culture and the practices of your institution um, and can be kind of that objective listener and share some, some ideas of how, how you can um, add to your work. We've also had um, folks say that it was really nice to just have a very informal reason to connect with another open education practitioner where there's no like outcomes associated with it. And it's really just connecting on that human level. So um, if that's anything that appeals to you, we encourage you to participate. Next year's program uh, begins in September. Applications are currently open through July 28th. You can see the Z-Link on here that you can follow to get to that application. 
And we're also hosting an information session on Thursday, July 20th at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. The registration link is also on the slide. Um, if you'd like to attend and learn more from a panel of former participants in the program. All right, the NICE Forum is a space for members who are consortial or state system leaders to come together to share best practices for scaling open education initiatives across their membership. So we meet, the NICE group meets uh, on the second Tuesday of every month from 2 to 3 p.m. Central Time to discuss a particular topic that was chosen by NICE Forum members. The format is super informal with two to three members of the group sharing their experience on that particular topic of the meeting, followed by a facilitated discussion and then just an open question answer session with the larger group of attendees. Um, and really it's, you know, we have state system and consortial leads from different countries joining us um, from different states. Uh, and really, once again, members have commented on how nice it is to com connect with peers doing similar work and then also learn how others are doing similar work within different contexts and what that means and kind of gaining ideas and hearing what's worked well for other folks elsewhere. So uh, if, if you're interested in joining the NICE Forum, all you have to do is email me at the address that you see here on the slide, and I will be sure to add you to the contact list. Finally, joining the Publishing Cooperative is a way to connect directly with other colleagues interested in publishing open textbooks. Members who complete Pub 101 and want to continue to learn more about publishing in community with others are invited to join the Publishing Co-op. And you can learn more about this program along with a number of other publishing focused opportunities at tomorrow's introduction to publishing support session with my colleague Karen, which is happening from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. Central Time. All right, and now transitioning to talk about OEN delegates. So OEN member institutions and consortia are able to designate what we call OEN delegates, who then have direct access to our community and the basic tools that we're about to cover, including the Google Group and the Community Hub. So institutional members, as you can see on the slide here, uh, can add up to three delegates in addition to their main OEN contacts, so essentially four people. Um, and consortia and state systems can add up to eight delegates in addition to their main OEN contact for nine people total. So who is usually chosen as a delegate? Delegates are open education practitioners in some capacity or another that looks different at every member institution. Um, but they're oftentimes also, if there's a open education committee at an institution, they may be a part of that as well. But really what, what they do is they serve as liaisons between the OEN and your campus community, uh, sharing out community hub materials locally and communicating with the Google group, Google group on behalf of your campus. So um, they're kind of the point people that are seen as the local leaders in open education at your institution. And then they interface directly with our community as well. If you have any updates or questions about who your delegates uh, may be, please feel free to email me at the address you can see on the screen. I'm really going to share that with you a lot today and hope you one of your takeaways from today's session is that I feel free to email me with any questions or thoughts you have. Um, I do want to point out that some of you here today may come from what we refer to as consortial institutions, meaning that you're a part of OEN member consortia or state systems. Um, but not necessarily direct members of the OEN yourselves. As part of our member consortia, you can upgrade your membership at a discounted rate to add your own delegates and gain direct access to these tools. Um, and for more information on that discounted institutional membership to again, then have your own delegates, check out the link to our website in the chat. 
Okay, so tool number one, the Google Group Community of Practice is an active welcoming space for you to connect with other OEN members directly, whether that's asking questions to crowdsource answers, to share challenges, or I always um, have enc been encouraging folks to share their successes as well as I think there's a lot to learn from those, or it might bring others a much needed boost while sharing in your OER wins. I know it's hard to toot our own horn sometimes, but always great to celebrate in the Google group. It's also a great place to promote opportunities like events or conferences that you're hosting that are open to the broader open education community. And it's also the place where our staff shares out information on OEN programs, professional development, opportunities, events, and other updates. So um, if, if there are any other frequent users of the Google group in the session who'd like to share what they find most useful about the listserv, feel free to share your comments in the chat. So really, uh, it is the Google group is the OEN community in your inbox, and there are people at all different stages of open education programming in the group, including people who are just getting started. So we, once again, really hope that you feel welcome sharing and engaging with your fellow community members in this space. And we encourage you to keep the Google group top of mind as a place for you to tap into that knowledge of our community, the experience, the generosity of our community members, or as a space to continue the conversations for any sessions that you attend this week if they're sparking ideas or thoughts. I do really quickly want to mention that a limitation with the Google group is that while everyone is able to receive messages in their inbox and send emails to the listserv, only email addresses associated with Gmail are able to directly access the Google group page itself, which you've got a screenshot on here of what that looks like. So if you're a delegate and you'd like to add a Gmail address to access the page directly, feel free to email me or I can share information with you on how to link your email, your non-Gmail email to a Google Drive account. That's another workaround. So to summarize, we really, this is a space for you. So we hope no matter who you are, uh, that you feel welcome to connect with your the community in, in the Google group space. All right, our next tool, the Community Hub, is a collection of community-created openly licensed resources to support you in building a foundation for your open education initiatives. Uh, it also includes all of the slides and support materials to conduct local OEN workshops that will be teaching you how to deliver during Tuesday and Thursday's Train the Trainer sessions. And it also houses an abundance of resources to support you with publishing open textbooks, and uh, finally, it's also another place where we post OEN news, our blog posts, and other important membership updates. Delegates can log into the Community Hub via the OEN website, as you can see here, which if you haven't checked it out yet, we've recently updated our website and highly encourage you to explore it, as there's also some really useful resources on there. And it does a great job of outlining the programs available to you. And I also encourage delegates to feel free to log into the Community Hub now if you're able, as we're about to walk through some of the features together. All right, so here's what you see when you're logged into the Community Hub. Beginning with the Resources tab on the left-hand side, you can see that there are a number of different themed resource sections. If you click on a session, it accordions down to show you a list of related materials aimed at supporting your work. And as all of the resources in the hub are open, delegates who can access the community hub are, are free to share anything you find on here more broadly with your colleagues on campus or to modify or customize the materials to best fit your needs. On the right hand side, there is a list of open textbook library data points. These numbers might be helpful to share with faculty as you introduce them to the open textbook library as a resource for finding open textbooks. And then clicking on the purple button that you can see the arrow pointing to here allows you to submit an open textbook to the OTL. So given that uh, the textbook fits our criteria for inclusion, we may add it and we really appreciate your help in expanding our collection. By clicking the 
teal button in the section below, you can see the arrow pointing to it on the slide. You are able to add details about any open textbooks that you or your faculty may be in the process of developing, which will then show up on the open textbook library page under the coming soon section. So not only is this really great PR for your open textbook authors, but this is also helpful to those who might be searching the collection and not finding maybe quite what they're looking for. And so seeing what's coming down the pipeline can alert them of any relevant content that they that may be available to them or they might want to use in the future. Moving over to the events tab, this is where you can view the details and registration information for events hosted by the OEN or by our community members that they may have shared out via the Google group. So if you're looking for upcoming professional development opportunities and events, this is a really great place to start. If you are hosting an event and would like to invite the community, again, you're more than welcome to announce that via the Google group and we'll be sure to add it to the calendar on here or click the purple button on the right. You can, um, there's an arrow pointing to it on the screen here. And you can then submit an event and your event details to be added to the calendar. And last but certainly not least, the data dashboard is a tool to help you collect and organize data on your open education initiatives, follow up with faculty regarding OER reviews, adoptions, and enrollment information for courses they teach. You can pull the data from your dashboard for your own reporting and advocacy needs and track your program impact, including student savings resulting from your open education initiatives. For data security and integrity purposes, we do limit data dashboard access to one or two administrators per institution, and typically this is our main OEN contact. For those institutions that are not members of the OEN but are a part of a consortial or a state system member, your main consortial contact has access to the dashboard that they can use on your behalf. So again, if you have any questions about who your dashboard administrator is, or if you'd like to update that information or make any changes, you can feel free to email me at thee0017 at umn.edu. So uh, dashboard administrators will see an additional tab on their community hub, as you can see on the screen here, from which they can directly access their data dashboard and view information on how to use it. So. For those of you who are dashboard admins, I welcome you to open your dashboard to explore and click around with me as we move through the next couple of slides and simply click the link to your data dashboard to enter the platform. Here we've got an arrow on the slide pointing to where you can do that. And voila. Here we have a mock-up of a data dashboard account for the fictional training consortium. For the next couple of slides, I'm gonna show you some of the basic functionality of the dashboard so that you get an idea of how it might serve your data collection needs. Uh, to begin, we are here under the programs tab where you can create programs or groups of people that engage with your open education initiatives, whether that be via events or workshops that you host, perhaps grant cohorts that you manage or simply groups of faculty that you interface with over the course of the semester. You are able to add participants to each program and record internal notes and program details to keep all of that information organized and in one place. In addition to tracking your programs and participants, the dashboard also allows you to follow up with faculty by creating and sending email campaigns that we refer to as activity requests. There are two types of activity requests that you can send to faculty, the first being an invite for a faculty member to review a textbook in the Open Textbook Library that not only emails them, but it also generates a unique link for them to do so. This is the follow-up method to our OER adoption workshop that allows faculty to gain that firsthand like personal experience with an open textbook that really helps them see the integrity of the materials and envision how they might integrate OER into their courses. The second kind of activity request that you can send to faculty is an 
adoption or enrollment update. And this version uh, generates a link that faculty then can then click on to submit details on any OER that they've adopted, along with any specific course information and enrollment numbers. Integrating these regular check-ins into your workflow can be a really great way to stay on top of this information while also then having a regular touch point with faculty on your campus. And what you see on the screen here is the activity request form that you walk through to create these email campaigns. And as someone who doesn't love learning new platforms myself, I can confirm that this is a very simple process using uh, creating an activity request, even just using the dashboard in general, um, and easy to pick up once you've uh, had some training on it. Next, we have an example of the activity request progress window. Once you send out an activity request, this is where you can come to see a summary of who has responded to that request. So should you offer an incentive to your faculty for completing an activity request, such as a stipend for reviewing an open textbook, you can see in the incentive column that you also have the ability to track and manage that part of your workflow as your dashboard will notify you when someone has completed an activity request and you can respond accordingly and tick those boxes and mark it off once, you, once you're done with that. In terms of tracking details on specific program participants, each individual that you add to your dashboard has a user profile. And you can see our open education champion, Serena Williams, in this example. Her user profile allows you to record details about your interactions with her, and it also gives you a snapshot of how this faculty member has engaged with your open education initiatives, tracking which program or programs she's been a part of, and any activity requests that you may have sent to her, as well as any open textbook reviews that she has completed. There's also a tab under the user profile where any OER adoptions associated with this faculty member are recorded that tracks the information that you can see here on the slide, the name of the adopted OER, the course title, subject area, term, replaced textbook, as well as the course enrollment numbers for each term. You can also see that in addition to course enrollment numbers, you can track the replaced textbook cost and your dashboard will automatically calculate annual student savings based on those two data points. And the dashboard does these calculations in real time. So as you as you enter enrollment numbers, so it's a lot of fun and it's quite rewarding to see those numbers add up as you update your enrollments. Finally, the reports tab is where you can go to pull the data from your dashboard so that you can use it for your own advocacy and reporting purposes. On the left-hand side, you can see that there are a number of data visualizations that you can download based on the information in your dashboard. And on the right-hand side, you're able to download CSV files organized by a number of different data points that you can then manipulate to serve your own data reporting purposes. So while that was a very quick overview of some of the ways in which the data dashboard can support your work, some of the, the features and functionality. We do offer thorough training that you can move through either at your own pace on our data dashboard documentation site, which you can see linked here, or if uh, in-person virtual synchronous, I should say, learning is more your style, we do offer two monthly synchronous training sessions where we walk you through the dashboard functionality and you have a chance to ask questions as we go and, and move through it yourself. All upcoming data dashboard training sessions and registration links are listed on the Community Hub events calendar. And the next intro and basic session is happening next Tuesday, July 18th from 12 to 1 p.m. Central. And the more in-depth deep dive session is happening next Thursday, July 20th from 1 to 2 p.m. Central. So again, we've got each of those training sessions once per month. So now that we've covered all of that, next up is how to plug in during this week's sessions. Later on this afternoon, we've got another opportunity for you to connect with fellow members over your story of self or your journey to becoming an open education advocate. We hope it, that it's an opportunity for you to feel connected and re-energized in your work while getting to know others in our community. 
at tomorrow morning's train the trainer session, two of our OEN community members who are so awesome, Meggie Mapes and Cheryl Casey will teach you how to deliver the OER adoption workshop to your faculty that introduces them to open textbooks and the OTL as a resource for finding them. And this is the workshop where, as I mentioned before, you'll use your data dashboard to follow up with faculty, inviting them to review a textbook in the open textbook library. Tomorrow afternoon's introduction to publishing support is great for anyone interested in learning more about all of the ways we can support you and your faculty's existing open test textbook publishing initiatives, as well as um, it will kind of give you an orientation to open textbook publishing for those who may be new to the process and supporting open textbook authors. So we've got a number of different opportunities based on where you're at with your publishing on your campus. At Wednesday's session, you will hear from a number of folks in our community who have extensive experience hosting and leading those OER adoption workshops, and you will gain tips and ideas for hosting your own workshops based on what's worked well for them, and you'll also have a chance to ask them questions directly. On Thursday, we have another Train the Trainer session. We're very excited about this one. That one is on how to lead our new open pedagogy workshop, where you'll also learn how to facilitate faculty learning circles as a follow-up to the open pedagogy workshop. And to wrap the week, our Engage Encore is a space where we'll have themed breakout rooms on publishing, the OER workshop, uh, OER adoption workshop, excuse me, the open pedagogy workshop, and a uh, just here for the party room whose purpose is simply to socialize and celebrate the culmination of the week with one another. We really look forward to seeing many of you at these sessions, hopefully, and once again, with the exception of the Story Circles and Engage Encore, the others will be recorded, um, other sessions will be recorded for those who may be unable to attend live. All right, and now we've got some time left for questions, P please um, feel free to add them to the chat or unmute and ask. And um, I will begin here with some questions about delegates. Do delegates only have access to the tools, um, the Google group and the community hub? Yes, great question. So, um, Delegates are the only ones from an institution. So if you're at an institution, that'll be four people. If you're at a consortium or state system, that'll be nine people that have that direct login access to the community hub to, to access those community resources and the events calendar. And then um, also to be a part of the Google group. And the rationale behind this is so that instead of having members on your or colleagues on your campus turn directly to the open education network to us uh, for open education support. The notion or the, the idea is that these delegates are then empowered as local leaders who can be the ones sharing out uh, these resources locally so that their colleagues on campus will look to them as, as the main source of all things open education. So again, to really help cultivate that um, open education leadership locally uh, and to connect folks on campus versus having them go directly to us. Uh, and a follow-up question is, does a delegate equal an administrator? Thank you for clarifying this jargon. So Again, when, when we say OEN delegate, they are someone who has access to the community hub and Google group tools. And when we say an administrator, the administrator is the person who then, in addition to those two things, has access directly to the data dashboard. And um, again, for as a best practice, we've found that having one to two data dashboards administrators is best because um, for data integrity purposes, there are different ways to do things. So to kind of standardize the way that the dashboard is used. And then also there is faculty information in the dashboard. So for that data security uh, purpose, but we're flexible. So, you know, if you've got a team where you're like three of us are always doing things in the data dashboard, or it would be really helpful to our work to make that possible. Just let me know. And we can certainly 
update that information and add another administrator for your institution. Any other questions? All right, well, um, to summarize again, Kieran put it so well in the chat. If you ever feel that you are alone in this work, I know a lot of you might be the only person leading open education initiatives on your campus. Um, know that we are here for you. The whole community is behind you and here for you. So feel free to message the Google group or reach out to our staff or any um, other community members that you have met um, for, for that support and, and we're happy to help. Wishing you all a wonderful OEN Engage week and thanks again for joining us today.